The Grand National is without any doubt the biggest horse race in the world and winning it a dream for any jockey. The man I've come to see won it at his first ever attempt. I set myself a target of riding in the Grand National by 21. I was always very disappointed I didn't manage to do that. Yeah, that but then, cool, but yeah, <laughs> but then when I managed to get the chance at 23 and then first first time at it and then, then win it, you can never um, think that that's ever going to happen. But just 18 months later, he walked away entirely from the sport he loved. Uh, like I just got to my wit's end with it. I just couldn't see a way of, of, of continuing. I was in the wrong place to to, to really appreciate it, but I'm certainly making up for it now. Right, back to the beginning. How, how did it start for you, racing or horses? What came first? Um, horses came first. Horses have been my life for forever. I probably wasn't the bravest, I, I'd be the first to, to admit I was happy on a horse, but I wouldn't have been the bravest. I had some tricky ponies and horses that scared the life out of me. I'd have been, you know, teenager, fif 15, say, 14, 15, before I actually got quite brave, and that came from riding the, the racehorses, hunting and, and things like that. But yeah, until that point, yeah, I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't for doing anything uh, too exciting. Okay. You know, I probably, you know, certainly, I, 10, 11, 12, I would never have um, thought that I was going to end up doing what I was doing now. Don't have to fast forward very far, 2013, when you're only 23, yeah. and you win the Grand National. Yeah. The race itself. Can you remember it? Can, can you sort of replay the race? It do, I, can, I can, but it doesn't, it doesn't feel real. It's still, you know, still when you watch the replay back now, it, it doesn't doesn't feel real. We were genuinely going for the day out because although we knew the horse stayed the trip, he hadn't ran a good race all year, and we we knew he was in good form, but you just you never know what to expect, and so it was everything was very relaxed, and um, I think that all helped. You know, there's no expectation, no pressure, no nothing. It was just go and enjoy yourself and, and that's what we did. Did that change at any point in the race? Is there a point where you think we're not any more here for a day, I, I, I could place and then actually I could win? You know what, I, I don't think there, there ever was. I think I think the whole way around I was in, in probably disbelief as to, oh I'm still here, I'm still here and it was with each fence, oh I'm still here and then it probably, there was a bit of realisation when I crossed the Merlin Road thinking, oh well, I'm going okay. But even then, you never think you're going to win. And even after jumping the last, we winged the last, and the whole running, I'm thinking someone's going to come past me. You know, this this doesn't happen to to me. You know, this is this is there's no way. And then crossing the line again, I was waiting for the steward's bell to go and say, "Oh, you've <laughs> you've gone the wrong course, or you've done something wrong." Like you, you genuinely you just never believe that it's going to happen. As I say, I never thought at any point thought oh, I'm, I'm going to win or it, nothing changed and I remember being slated for not celebrating and you know not really looking happy but it's just disbelief just absolute disbelief that something like that can happen. Some people often say about things like that oh, it took days for it to sink in but you, you didn't get days no because the very next day where were you Hexham? Hexham yeah and ended the day airlifted off in a yeah, helicopter. Yeah it was a slight regret of mine I remember so I, I went home after Aintree and then of course I went down to Sue and Harvey's in the morning for the press day and Sue said to me, you don't have to go to Hexham, mm -hmm. you, you really don't have to. I said, no, no, I wanted normality because everything after National and everything that, that followed it was just crazy, like it was manic and sort of a world that I'd never seen before and um, I just wanted to go back to work basically and I said to Sue, no, no, I'm, I'm going to go and I think, yeah, we probably should have just stayed at home. <laughs> Nose banded in company with stagecoach Jasper in the white with the pale blue stars for the Grand National winning jockey Ryan Mania, followed by Master Murphy and then Liakon Scale. Stagecoach Jasper makes a little bit of... Oh, he's gone! Stagecoach Jasper's gone and he's interfered with Snapping Turtle and Chavoy. The horse actually didn't make a mistake. Landed fine, stumbled, fell. Horse from behind stood right in the back of my neck for... I don't know what, what felt, a, you know, 
10, 20 seconds, might have been two or three, but I thought it was, I thought it was a goner, you know, because I couldn't move, I felt like my body was floating, I was like, this is, this, that's it, and um, ended up fracturing C7 and T1 in my bottom of my neck. That probably made me more famous than the national, because suddenly there was, you know, oh, he won the national, who cares? Oh, no, he's tried to kill himself the day afterwards. <laughs> so that was, um, yeah, it became quite popular. It was it was strange lying in the hospital and, and hearing that the reporters were trying to sneak in to, to see me and things like that. That's just, again, a world that I knew nothing about and um, certainly opened my eyes to a few things. So less than eight well 18 months later towards the end of 2014 you stop riding yeah well i mean straight after the national the, the season after i had my best season i've ever had with 52 or 53 winners or something and um, had a great time but always in the back of my mind i was thinking just struggling a little bit here you know like it was i was waking up every morning 11 stone thinking this is terrible and everything just got on top of me um you know i, I shouldn't have I think the, the worst thing I did was not, I didn't speak to anybody. I was going to say, did, was there anyone you no. could go to and say, you know, what, what like should I, I was, do? I was having this thing going on in my head every time going racing, every morning waking up, standing on the scales, and no, nobody knew, no, you know, not even my, my family, my, my, my agent at the time, nobody knew that I was, I was having this, this battle um, except me when I decided it was very sudden and mm. literally the morning of it was a Sedgefield meeting I'd, I'd weighed myself the night before and I'm thinking oh yeah you know I'd been I'd been exercising that I hadn't eaten too much and I was still heavy and I thought I'm gonna have to wake up in the morning and lose four pound or something and I was like this is ridiculous I was like but I'll go to bed now I'll be fine now I'll be fine woke up in the morning lost nothing um, through the night and I just thought, I can't do this. I literally phoned up my agent. I said, I'm not going, I'm, I'm done. I'm, you know, that's it, I'm retiring. And he was like, what, what do you mean? <laughs> you know, what's going on? And I was like, I just can't, I just can't do it. You know, I didn't like who I was. You know, the whole build up to that had made me so grumpy and, and just not a nice person to be around. And um, yeah, it just, that was it. How did it feel when you made that decision that morning? Can you remember? Do, do you know, I felt, felt great. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Like it was like a, a load off my mind, you know. Like I'd been stressing about getting the weight down and and not eating this, not eating that. And then when I suddenly went, oh, I'm not gonna, I'm I'm done. I just, it was it was instant relief. It was it was knowing that I didn't have to worry about it anymore. Um, and it was it was a nice nice feeling. So it solved that instantly. What yeah. what did you then do with yourself? What took me two years to to realise that I'd done wrong. Um, I was asked to ride in a charity race, rode in a charity race, won the charity race. Oh, what was I doing? Do you honestly, like, you know, the same, the, the desire and the buzz had never left. It was just the the struggle that I'd, I'd dealt with that, that made racing a, a toxic place for me, almost. Once I realised that I'd definitely retired too soon, it was in my head, I thought, I'm going to have to give it a go at some point. Um, I didn't know when that was going to be, but I knew that I wanted to, to, to give it another try. Well, that's half of it, isn't it? Because you've made the decision, I, I definitely want to go back. But the next thing is, how did you find um, a way back? Well, first and foremost, it, like uh, most of the credit has to, to go to my wife, Annie, because she gave me that stability. So that's the, the plus side that's came out of retiring, is that I was able to go away, have a proper relationship, get married, and find yourself in that, that very happy, stable um, position. She hadn't really experienced me as a jockey, and um, her stepfather, Sandy Thompson, had offered me a job as assistant trainer. And unbeknown to him, as soon as he offered me the job, I thought, "Well, that's ideal. <laughs> I'll just <laughs> I'll go work for him, and then I'll slowly get my weight down, hopefully, and um, get my license back." So I got in touch with a dietitian, and he put me on this meal plan, exercise plan, and gave me the meal plan. And I'm like. This is too much food. You know, like, this. How how <laughs> am I going to eat this and lose weight? And and it works. Uh, I mean, the rest is is actually history. I mean, it, it just the weight came down relatively quickly. I'd never been fitter, and I couldn't believe that this had just you know came into my life. I mean, where was this a few years ago when I was struggling? Now 
since I've been back, we've had a few big winners, and it's just, like, it, honestly, it means everything. They're on the approach to the 26th and final fence. It is Win My Wings with the lead. Jumps it well, led up by three. A clear surface giving chase. Back in third is Innisfree Lad. Driven right out towards the line. Win My Wings, well back to win the Ida, and win it she will. We're 2022 now, so just just let's let's compare Ryan Manu 2012 with 2022. What's <laughs> what's the difference? Very <laughs> couldn't be any more different. I have a wife, two lovely children. You have a winner. My daughter phones up and says, well done, Daddy, you've had a winner. And if you've had a bad day, she says, oh, you didn't win today, Daddy, and gives you a hug and everything's fine. That's the difference, is, is that when you have a, a stable, nice family life to come back to, what happens in the race course doesn't matter. But when you have the good days, you appreciate so much more. What did you call your daughter? Aurora. <laughs> yeah, it was the first, first thing my wife and I agreed on when we said, if we ever have a daughter, we're going to call her Aurora. There's a nice story behind it, and um, and hopefully one that she can tell or tell her friends without being too embarrassed. Final question: What's what? What, what does the future hold? What do you do? You set yourself targets? Do you have plans? No, no plans, no targets. Um, I just keep riding, keep turning up, keep doing the job. Um, I, you know, we, I want to ride nice horses, but if it, it, that's not the be all and end all, we just want to. Go out and ride winners, keep everybody happy, um, which is hard. But you know, we we try our best and um, and just keep riding for as long as I can. Will your father-in-law ever get his assistant trainer back, which is what he hired you for? <laughs> uh, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, that could be a long time coming. Yet he might be retiring the same time as I do.